Hey everyone, if you are enjoying these videos, go check out my website at www.apcsexamprep.com. I have information on boot camps and tutoring availability, along with other AP Computer Science resources I think you'd enjoy. Hello and welcome to 1.10 of Code HS's AP Computer Science A 2025 edition. Today we're going to be talking about calling class methods. So in the past we've been creating instance methods. So that's what our typical method would look like. Um, we might have a main method and then we have our own custom methods. If you have a method inside of the main class, you are actually um, going to create those as class methods. You need to use the keyword static versus when you make most of your methods in the other classes, more typically they're instance methods and not class methods. So we'll go over what a class method is a little bit more. So there's a difference between class method and instance method. So class methods are methods that belong to this class itself and can be called without creating an instance object of the class. Instance methods, while also defined in the class, can only be called using the objects that you create from the class. So you actually have to create an object in order to call those methods versus the class methods you don't have to. So what does that mean exactly? So whenever you have a class method, um, and in this case, it's the main method is what we're talking about, the static, the class method. Any method that you call within the same class has to also be a static method. So the reason that is, is that whenever you create a static method, a class method, it belongs to the class, meaning you don't have to create an instance of that class in order to call that method meaning you don't have to have any specific values assigned to that object in order to call the the method because it's a class method and so all of the other methods within that the rules are that you can't call an instance method inside of a class method because usually instance methods require instance variables or something to do with the instance or the object in order to have it be called so you can just think, I mean, that's a little bit confusing for where we're at now, um, but it might make more sense in a little bit. But you can just think of it that any static method can only call other static methods. So since the main method is static, all the other methods that you call within the same class have to also be static. Okay, um, so the nice thing about static methods is because they are class methods, you do not, like we said, have to create an instance of the class. So I don't have to say calculator C equals new calculator. Add numbers belongs to the entire class. And so all class methods need to have the key, the static keyword. Um, and then your format for calling it is just the class name dot the method name and then it's arguments. So why, why would we create static methods or class methods? Class methods allow you group related functionality together in one place, making code more organized while reducing redundancy and the chance for errors. Class methods can be used without creating objects, which make them perfect for utility for helper methods. So um, here's our calculator class. We have a square root distance slope. So instead of actually having to create a calculator object, our calculator is not we're not storing data about our calculator. Like we wouldn't store the width or the height of the calculator, probably not gonna be needed in our program. The calculator is a helper class. We are doing formulas in the calculator class just for the purpose of being able to have them stored and being able to borrow them so that we can use them in our main method here. And so because we don't need to create a calculator object, we don't need to store the value of calculator. It's just a list of functions, a list of equations that we're um, having the computer do for us. We, it's a perfect example of a static, a list of static methods because we just want to utilize them for the utility purpose. We don't need to store um, uh, a location. We don't need to store a calculator object in order to use them. So we can call square root, call distance, call square root again, then call slope, then calls distance, then call square root, whatever we wanna do, we can call over and over again. It's from the calculator class, very easy to access, calculator dot square root 49. So in the calculator dot Java class, we would have the public static void because it's printing the, the answer square root, and then it would calculate it and print it out. 
Okay, so static methods, it takes a little bit of actual hands-on practice uh, for you to really get a full understanding of for, for the most part. So here we have a few static method calls. Um, we have log info in the logger class. So let's look in the logger class and see what it does. So all it does is it adds info onto the end of whatever message you want or before the message you want and adds them together. So it adds a new line, it says info colon, and then it adds message. So it kind of logs the information in a little bit of a different way. Log warning, we have our log, we add warning and then a message, and then log error, we add error and then a message. So this would application started successfully. Log info, low memory, log warning, an unexpected error occurred. I wouldn't want to log warning. I would want to log error, print log, use helper method to reset log, then print log. So in order to call reset log, it's right here, right? So old log, log, system number. Okay, that seems like it works. Okay, so if we look at the assignment, let's make sure we, we're doing all of this. So which class is first executed when you click run? Well, the, the runner, the class with the main method, so log runner because of main method. Um, on line nine, remove code log equals. Predict how this will, okay. So line, so I think this was line nine, logger dot log info. Um, log info returns a string value. So because string is immutable, it would not update. And so, yeah, I don't think really anything would show up on that part. So that would just it, it not show that, yeah. So it doesn't show the log info there. Okay, add it back. Log equals. Um, on line nine in the log runner class, remove the code logger dot. Okay, well that would try to call a method that doesn't exist. Um, this method only exists as a static method in the logger class. It doesn't exist in the main. So that would cause an error. I'm not even gonna check that because I know that. Again, predict how this will affect the output. Why is the notation calling the class method reset log different than the notation for calling all the other class methods? So reset log is located within the same class. So we see it right here. It is static. And since the main method is static, we know that the reset log also has to be static in order to be called in the same class. Um, so yeah, that's why we don't need to have the class name dot. Change the code in line, uh, line 11. Uh, that I already did. After line 11, log a new info message that says application restarted successfully. Log, okay. So this would just be log info. Log equals logger dot log info. Log comma. And then copy and paste. Info, warning, error, info. So it started, low memory, unexpected error, restarted successfully. Check code. Forgot a period. I think that's it. Okay. Let's try that again. All right, very good. Which of the following headers correctly sets up a class method named join all that will return a string value? So static and string. Consider options below when answering this question. Why might a programmer decide to define a class method in one of their program's classes? To make the code more reusable across different parts of the program. To avoid duplicating code when the same task needs to be performed multiple times. 
to tie the method to a specific object and its attributes. Definitely not that. To make the method callable without creating an object. Yes, definitely four. So which one has four? Well, one, two, and four. So these are uses of creating any method. Um, not just a class method, but four is one that needs to be done for a class method. So that's why that would be our answer. Assume that there are two classes in a program, update and main class, that our variables are that all variables are declared and initialized correctly and that there are no class methods defined in main class. So the code snippet below is from the main method. Within the main class, unfortunately, it results in an error. Choose the option below that fixes the error. Okay. And probably render. All the other ones have update dot. Oh, this should have update dot. Um, yeah, they said there's no other methods in the main class, so this should also probably say update dot. Line six should have update dot in front of render. Yes. Line nine needs a dot in between. Yes. Uh, line six should have update dot in front and line nine. Okay, so both. Yeah, there we go. All right, this program includes a class named unit converter that has methods that perform common unit conversions. Read through the class to understand how each method works. This class has been tested and works as expected. The code and main method of unit runner class performs a few unit conversions, printing out the result. Unfortunately, there are three bugs in its code at the moment that cause errors when trying to run. Fix the bugs so the program runs successfully, printing out the result of the three unit conversions. Okay. So bugs are going to be in here. All right. So Celsius to Fahrenheit, if we don't have... It has a double. This would be int division dividing to zero or one. Nine divided by five would be like what, 1.8, and then cast or it would be converted to an int and so truncate the decimal and just be one. So we wouldn't want that. Again, 5.0, there's two errors, and then I don't know where the other error is. So let's take a look. Oh, okay. Maybe it's in here unit converter dot this doesn't use unit converter dot unit converter dot okay see if there's any errors with that celsius to fahrenheit zero double to an int so this probably is supposed to be a double. Yeah. Okay. Check our code. All right, there we go. Okay, use a scanner class to ask user for their name. Call at least three class methods from the hello class to print a greeting in three different languages. So let's check it check out the hello class. English, Spanish, French, German, Russian. Okay. Um, string name equals input dot next line. Um, I can do hello dot and call any method in the hello class, but I need to pass in name. And then I can go copy, paste, paste, paste. German, Russian. Well, I need to enter my name. All right, there we go. Perfect, there we go. All right, algebra calculator. It's your turn to use these methods in the main method of the calculator runner. You need to calculate and print the slope between these two coordinates, 1, 1, and 5, 10. Remember that coordinates are written as x, y. So if I look at the calculator, if I want to do the slope, I need 1, 1, and x2, y2 would be 5, 10. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Returns a double. 
So calculate and print. So let's just try printing out calculator dot slope one comma one five comma ten. Calculate and print the distance between those. Okay, calculate dot distance of two comma three comma six comma seven two three six seven and then finally two real roots of the quadratic equation uh two eight so two for the x value eight and then zero so what is for the quadratic roots so a is what comes before right here so that would be what, one, and then eight, no, and then two, and then eight. One, two, and then eight. One, because there's nothing. Two, and eight, okay. There we go. Uh, how do you call this method? Is it full out spelled? No, quad roots. Calculator dot quad roots, one, two eight okay i didn't see that minus eight there tricky so it'd be negative eight now when we check our code all right there you go and so in your investigate describe at least three advantages of having these class methods in the calculator class as compared to completing the calculation right in the main method um it doesn't jumble our code in the main method so it doesn't make the main method longer than it needs to be it also uh, organizes our code all in the calculator. In the calculator, we're doing certain calculations. So we know, you know, calculator dot, and we can just kind of find um, where that is. Um, and then with other programmers, if they're using our code, um, they're able to also be able to find the methods as they need. So, All right, and that is it for 1.10 of AP Computer Science A 2025 edition. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to check out my website apcsexamprep.com where you can get more information on boot camps and tutoring availability.